Hi, my name is Dr. Anthony Lomera and I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. Today we're going to talk about tricuspid valve surgery, specifically tricuspid valve repair or replacement. Before we get started, let's go over the anatomy of the heart. This is a model of the heart. I like to think of the heart in terms of sides. This is the right side, right atrium, right ventricle, and this is the left side, left atrium, left ventricle. The blood will classically go from the right atrium to the right ventricle, and the left atrium and left ventricle. Between the right atrium and the right ventricle is a valve. It's referred to as a tricuspid valve. When the valve opens, the blood goes through the right atrium into the right ventricle, and when the valve closes, the blood stays in each compartment. Now, there are several indications to operate on the tricuspid valve. One would be tricuspid valve stenosis. That's actually when the valve is hard to open. And so what ends up happening is the blood goes from the right atrium, but, it has to, but the heart has to push really hard to get the blood through the valve into the right ventricle. There's also tricuspid valve regurgitation, and that's when the blood goes from the right atrium through the valve into the right ventricle, but because the valve is leaking, the blood goes, a lot of the blood goes back into the right atrium, making the right atrium bigger, which is not better. Another indication for operating on the tricuspid valve is if there is infection of the tricuspid valve, and that's referred to as tricuspid valve endocarditis. When the valve is infected, sometimes the valve can be hard to open, like tricuspid valve stenosis, or it could be leaky, like tricuspid valve regurgitation. So that'd be another indication to repair or replace the valve. If someone is going to have tricuspid valve surgery, first they'll go to the operating room, they'll go to sleep, we'll open up their chest, and then we'll place the patient on the heart-lung machine. Once we're on the machine, we'll give the, medicine, the heart medicine so it doesn't move. With the heart not moving, we'll then open up the right atrium, and we'll assess the valve. If the valve can be repaired, which essentially means it's fixing it, we'll usually add some additional sutures, or, and we'll also put a ring on it, or either or. If we're replacing the valve, we're essentially taking the valve out and completely and put, putting a new valve in. Now, there are actually two different types of valves we can put in. We could put a mechanical valve, which essentially is a valve that will last forever but require blood thinners, or there's a tissue valve, which usually comes for a cow or a pig, and that lasts classically somewhere between 12 and 15 years. Once you've either repaired or replaced a valve, you close the right atrium, and then you try to get off the heart-lung machine. Once we're off the heart-lung machine, we'll then close the chest and try to get to the, and then go to the intensive care unit. Most patients will classically spend five or six days in the hospital, then they'll go either home or rehab. The length of the operation can vary. It's usually between two and three hours, but if, we're at, if there are additional parts of the operation, for example, if you're doing bypass surgery, or if there are additional valves that need to be operated on, that will increase the length of the operation. We do these operations all the time, but there are risks involved. There's risk of infection, risk of bleeding, there's even a risk of death. The risk of death varies. It could be somewhere between 2 and 3%, but that can increase if the patient has a lot of risk factors or if we're adding different parts of the operation. If we're adding a bypass, if we're adding another valvular surgery, all that can increase the risk. Now, that's a basic description of tricuspid valve surgery. If you have any additional questions, please let me know. Thank you very much.